what is going on everybody welcome to your seventh C++ tutorial and in this tutorial guys I'm super excited because we're finally going to begin building our own custom functions however before we begin I need to ask you guys a question that I've been meaning to ask you in the last tutorial since I got this new compiler do you think this text is too small too big or just right I don't want it too small where you guys can't even read it of course but I don't want it too big where in the future where I build complex programs that all the text is just going to run off the screen. So anyways, for YouTube viewing, is this too small, too big, or just right? Let me know. Get back to me. Leave me a comment. Thank you. See you later. End of tutorial. Just kidding. Alright, let's go ahead and get to the meat and bones of this tutorial, which is building our own custom function. But before we do, let's go over some terminology real quick. I think I went over this in like the second tutorial, but let's uh, run through this again. Tutorials, or excuse me, <laughs> tutorials, listen to me. Functions are made up of pretty much the same basic parts. The first part is the return type, and this is pretty much, if you ask for anything back when you're done building your function, this is what you get back. This main function gets an integer back, so that's why it says int right there. After that, you have your function name, which is pretty much the title of your function. After your function name, you have parentheses which can or cannot be filled with information depending on if your function needs parameters in order to run. We covered those in the last two tutorials, so this one, main, takes no information since it's called from your operating system. And of course, after all of that, you get the body, which is pretty much the instructions for your function. Um, I think I went over all of that in the last couple of tutorials, but anyways, if I didn't, then when I build this one right here, you guys are clearly going to see what's going on. So anyways, we have this main function right here. So let's go ahead and outside of it, let's build another function. Make sure that you don't build it on the inside right here or you're going to get some pretty effed up error messages. So I'm going to build a function called Bucky, and it's not going to really do any calculations or anything like that. All it's going to do is print something on the screen, so we're not really asking for anything back. We're just telling it to do something. So since we're not asking for any information back, go ahead and write void. This is the computer equivalent of nothing. That's what void means. Actually, that's kind of like the life's equivalent. I guess they mean nothing, void. Anyways enough of me talking next we need to give this function a name you can name anything you want except if it's a cuss word you can't do that well I'm just kidding you actually probably could but anyways I have to say that for legal purposes do you guys actually believe that you can name it a cuss word if you want go ahead I dare you to alright now I'm gonna be building a function where we pass it in a number and it just prints out a sentence like my favorite number is blank whatever number you put so I'm gonna pass it in like five and it's gonna say my favorite number is five alright so in the parameter list we need to give it the type of information we're gonna be passing in and a temporary variable that is gonna hold the place of that number so of course we're gonna be passing in an integer and just go ahead and we're gonna call the integer X in the body so you guys will see what uh, this means in a little bit Look at this. Oh, every time I hit my mouse, it moves to the left slightly. Look, I'm not even touching it right now. It's moving on its own. Probably should get that looked at. Let me just move that off the screen for now. But anyways, let's go ahead and start building this function body. Using namespace STDs, which stands for sexually transmitted disease. And let's go ahead and the only thing we want this function to do is output on the screen my fave number is and then go ahead and write x right here and then go ahead and end that line because if you don't it's going to bother me so what's going to happen is this whenever we use our function in the main program we're going to say like bucky using the number 20 so that 20 is going to be converted into the variable x so now whenever we use X in our body, it's going to go through everywhere in this body and wherever it sees the X is going to throw in whatever number the user passed in. So if someone passed in the number 30, it's going to say my favorite number is 30. If someone passed in the number 6, it's going to take that 6, convert it to an X and say my favorite number is 6. Simple enough. So you're saying, all right, we are ready to begin using this function. 
how on earth do we use it? Let's go ahead and build and run this and uh, see what problems we get so far. Let's see. Let's pass it in four and see what happens. What the heck? That's not what we wanted to do. I know what's going wrong right here. It's this. All right. Let me explain. Whenever we need to use a function, we need to call it from our main function. And this is why your operating system doesn't just call every function to begin with it only calls your main function that's its one job so in our main function we need to say alright we have another function here named Bucky that we want you to use so in your main function let's go ahead and write Bucky and let's go ahead and for that information write 20 since you can see in this function header it takes one integer and so whenever we call our function we're going to pass it in one integer simple enough if we didn't have this right here what would happen is this our program would call main it would say using namespace standard cn get return zero and just end it wouldn't even look at this at all so that's why we need to call these functions we build inside of main pretty cool huh but if we build this right now, then we get another error. And check this out. There's an error right there that says Bucky was not declared in the scope. What the heck does that mean? What this means is this. Anytime you build a function yourself, you need to make something called a function prototype. And function prototypes are the easiest thing in the world to do. Go ahead and copy your function header, copy, and under include go ahead and paste it without right there so instead of writing the variables name all you need to write is what type of data you're going to be passing it in so if you have like int x right here just write int if you have int x int y it's going to be int int and you're saying all right i understand how to do this but bucky why on earth would i need to prototype a function if we have the entire function created down here well check this out Whenever we create this C++ program, our program is going to do this. It's going to go main, and then it's going to look at Bucky and say 20, and it's going to say, whoa, easy, Bessie. Is this like a built-in function that I'm supposed to be looking at in one of these libraries, or are you trying to like make 20 equal to the variable Bucky, or what the heck is going on here? What a function prototype does is tell our compiler, all right, listen, compiler, when you get to this, don't freak out and don't give us a bunch of error messages. Our prototype is telling you that it's a function that we created ourselves and this is the information it takes. So don't freak out. Just note that it's a function we created ourselves. So just use it properly. So, you know, listen to me. I had a very stern voice when talking to my compiler. So anyways, that's what a function prototype does. And... Yeah, let's go ahead and run this in. We definitely shouldn't get any error messages now. So anyways, it says my favorite number is 20. So now everything is working perfectly. Our very first function we built, built ourselves is successful. So one last time, let me explain to you guys what just happened. <sighs> we prototyped our function just to tell our compiler, all right, we built a function named Bucky and it takes an integer. So whenever you come across it, don't freak out. Next, our operating system called main because it does that every time. It did all this stuff and then it said, all right, I'm going to use the function Bucky with the parameter of 20. All right, simple enough. So now from here, what I need to do is call this function and whenever I see X in this body, I'm going to throw in the number 20 because that's what they told me to do. So all they want me to do is print out my favorite number is X, which I'm going to say is 20, and then in that line. So it prints it out, and then it just waits and ends the program. So anyways, that is how building your own custom functions work. And that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. If you don't quite understand yet, then trust me. Whenever we start building more function functions, it's going to become so easy that you're going to look back on this story and be like, man, that was some kitty fifth grade stuff. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out my brand new website. I'm super excited about it. And check out my forum too. So anyways, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll smell you guys later.